Okay, so in OCHEM, what is great is that uh, we can do oxidation reactions. Now, if you're anyone like me, I hated oxidation reactions in Gen Chem. You know, keeping track of oxidation numbers and oxidation states. Luckily in OCHEM, oxidation for all intents and purposes for us, when you oxidize a carbon, you make more bonds to oxygen. It's as simple as that, which is really great, right? Because when we're learning a lot of things, the simpler we can make it, the better. Am I right? Okay, so let's just look at a simple alcohol. Okay, so for example, and throw back to our common naming days, this is isopropanol, right? Isopropyl alcohol. You, the names go on to uh, propanol, whatever. However, what if we want to accomplish this transformation? And let's think about what's going on here. There's one bond to hydrogen we have not drawn. So what we essentially want to do is we want a set of reagents that is going to take this bond, this carbon-hydrogen bond and replace it with another bond to oxygen, effectively taking this sp3 carbon, right, because sppp, sp3 carbon, and oxidizing it to an sp2 carbon with an extra, with now a sigma and a pi bond to oxygen as opposed to just having that sigma bond. Okay, so luckily there's two ways to do this. And then you'll see why we're talking about both ways. So the first way we can do this is with a set of reagents or a reagent called PCC. Some most teachers will be nice and they will just let you, you know, write PCC. Unfortunately, some teachers and it, they're totally justified by doing this. They may want you to memorize the structure of PCC. A quick Google search will show you what it looks like. But PCC will do the job. It will replace this carbon hydrogen bond and then have this carbon bond another uh, one extra time with oxygen. Now, the other set of reagents that can accomplish this, and you'll probably see this and be like, whoa, Joe, what are you doing? You need both sodium dichromate, Na2Cr2O7, and H2SO4. It doesn't matter that I'm drawing them on you know, both sides of the arrows, it could be up top, whatever. So one route is PCC, the other route is uh, sodium dichromate and H2SO4. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why the hell would I remember these reagents when I can just write PCC? That's a great question. I would agree with you. However, in this situation, right, they're equivalent. However, they can behave differently depending on the molecule you have. And let me show you an example. So I'm going to erase this because don't worry, we're going to be writing these reagents a bunch of times. If you almost want to think about it, the sodium dichromate in H2SO4, which is commonly referred to as the Jones reagents, is the more aggressive oxidizing agent. Or sorry, the, yeah, the mo it will oxidize things more aggressively. So let me show you this. So instead of isopropanol, let's just look at propanol. Now, if I use PCC here, PCC is not as aggressive as Jones or the sodium dichromate in H2SO4. You see, now we have this carbon. It's primary. It has two bonds to hydrogen. So what PCC is going to do here is it's only going to replace one of those bonds, and you are actually going... So if I, like, asterisk this hydrogen, this is him left over here. Only one H is kind of removed, and you only add one extra bond to oxygen. So the oxidation isn't as complete as it could be. Now, enter in Jones. What if, you know, I threw in H2SO4, Na2Cr2O7, what do we get? Well, Jones is more thorough, more aggressive than PCC. What you actually do is you're going to replace both of these hydrogens. They're gone. You still get the carbonyl, right? C double bonded O, but now you introduce another oxygen in the mix. Where you only have two bonds to play with, right? So you still get the carbonyl just like you do there. However, you're going to replace the second H with an OH. So it's a much more full oxidation. So the take home point here is PCC and Jones, if you have a secondary carbon, right, you get uh, ketones, right? Just like we did before with isopropanol, they will both give you the ketone. However, PCC, in a terminal sense, in a primary sense, it gives you the aldehyde. And on the other flip side of that, the Jones reagents, the H2SO4 and the Na2Cr2O7, they give you the full-blown carboxylic acid, and there's where the difference lies. Okay, 
So that's the, I guess the, those are the reagents. Now let me show you guys some, some tricks I've seen over the years or some things to look out for. There's only one thing, but it's, uh, it's something I've seen time and time again. Okay, so what if I showed you guys this structure? And let's say, oh, I don't know. I just said, let's oxidize this alcohol with PCC. So let's look at this carbon right here. Now, this is a tertiary alcohol, right? Because the carbon is bonded to one, two, three carbons. Tertiary alcohol. Tertiary alcohol. There are no bonds that this carbon has to hydrogen. So there's no bonds to replace to then bond extra to oxygen. So tertiary alcohols, frowny face with the mean face. If someone gives you this, they're trying to trick you. This is a no reaction. So careful. One question I have seen on a final exam when I was a, a TA at Pitt was something along this line right here. Something like, uh, yeah. Actually, oh, that's a little messy. Something like this. Na2Cr2O7, H2SO4. Sorry, I'll block. I'll stop blocking this. Okay, so it was to be assumed that this was an excess of Jones reagent, right? You could basically oxidize all the alcohols you had if for however many there were. So remember, Jones is the more aggressive one. It goes all the way to the carboxylic acid, given an alcohol, if possible. So we see here this primary carbon, two bonds to hydrogen. This is going to go to a carboxylic acid. One bond to hydrogen here. This will be a ketone. Oh, there's that tertiary alcohol. The mistake would be to oxidize this. But remember, you can't do that. So the product would look like this. Methyl. So the OH there remains the same. You now have a ketone at that position. So one, two. And now this carbon right here, I just have, oh, I have the right amount of carbons, right? That's the carbon I'm going to oxidize. That turns into a carboxylic acid. So make sure you don't add or subtract carbons when you do this. So watch out for the tertiary alcohol. And real quick, just the last thing I want to show you guys in your pros to oxidation is that if you are given, say, methanol, right? If you had PCC, what does that do? Well, you're just oxidizing a one carbon alcohol, so you're just going to replace one of these H's, right? So what you're going to do is you then have CH2O. And if you want to draw that out, it looks like this. This is formaldehyde, right? It's a one carbon aldehyde. On the flip side, and I'm just going to draw an arrow down for another reaction. What if I gave you guys the Jones reagents with this? Well, all you do here is replace two hydrogens. So instead of formaldehyde, you make formic acid, a one carbon carboxylic acid. Okay, that is the most you would ever need to know about oxidation. You will see how these reactions kind of play into what we're about to do. But remember, beware the tertiary alcohol. Remember, you can always oxidize one carbon alcohols. Remember, PCC goes to the aldehyde, and the Jones reagents goes all the way to the carboxylic acid. See you in the next video.